back. All right, so this is segment four of our uh, fast scan cycle voltammetry lecture. Uh, so the last two segments I covered why the CV looked like it did. That was a long time on CV. It turns out though that if you calculate something like, if you do like a four hour behavioral experiment and you take 10 CVs per second, you can imagine that means you're taking like something like 10,000 CVs and you don't want to look CV by CV. Like you don't have the time for that, you can't possibly look at that many CVs kind of thing. So the CV is the fundamental thing, we should understand it. But um, when people start to look at lots of data, they needed to other ways to look at it. So they invented this color plot, um, which hopefully you can kind of see. Um, uh, I brought an example of today uh, of dopamine. And so what we do here is try and show, um, I, I usually say all of the data. That's actually technically incorrect. This is not four hours worth of data, but it is a bunch of CVs at once. Um, and so we try and show a segment of CVs um, at, at the time. These colors are kind of standardized in the field. This brownish yellow color is our kind of zero color. Um, and uh, then this greenish color here represents oxidation. And the blue up here uh, represents reduction. Uh, and the color, we call it false color just because obviously there's no actual color in the experiment. It's not like fluorescence microscopy or something like that. Um, right, so there's no actual color. Uh, but we, we've assigned these colors and they kind of use them. So on the y-axis of the color plot, uh, we put our voltage that we're scanning. And I'm going to just draw on this. Like we, this, this would be the upward scan and that would be the downward scan. So we start at the bottom, minus 0.4. We ramp up to the middle at 1.3 in this case and then back down. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at. So the upward scan, when we're doing, this is our dopamine oxidation then. And then when we ramp back down, this is where we get reduction. This is just a flow cell experiment. We do a lot of flow cell experiments in FSCV to test our electrode. And so what we do is we first flow by just buffer. So this part, we're just flowing buffer. And then we do what we call an injection, but we really just flip a switch. And now we flow by dopamine for a few seconds. So here we're flowing by dopamine, and then we flip the switch back. And then this part, again, is buffer. So it's like buffer, dopamine, buffer. And if our flow cell is good, which I think for the most part they are, the response we should get should be kind of like a square, right? Where do buffer, dopamine, buffer um, uh, kind of thing. So that's what we should be getting. So we can take this color plot then that shows a bunch of CV. So this is time on the x-axis and current again is in color. Uh, we can take this color plot, and I don't have a CV on here because we just talked about CVs for like a long time, uh, but if we take a slice through it this way, that gives us that CV that we've been talking about. So uh, this would be a kind of vertical slice through. Uh, that's the plot, right, again, of voltage, current versus voltage. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about, because we haven't talked about this yet, is what if we took a slice this way, so again, I can write on this. Uh, we take a slice that way uh, through uh, the, the plot. Now what we're going to look at is current versus time. And so that's what we've put up here. This is a typical current versus time trace. They're on the same time scale, so I can put it above the plot uh, pretty easily. And we use these current versus time traces to really track how things change in the brain. It's just a simple way to do that. Now, if you um, want to look at something that has to do with like in vivo or something like that, what we'll do is we'll calibrate our electrode. We'll do some sort of flow injection analysis, find out that if I inject one micromolar dopamine, I got 10 nanoamps or something like that, right? I'll use that as a calibration factor. So sometimes we won't call this current versus time, we'll call it concentration, but I've done that calculation, right? It always, it, the raw data is always current. If I call it concentration, it's because I've changed it with a factor that I came up with. Okay, so we have a current versus time trace. And again, the first thing you should notice is that it wasn't my beautiful square that I told you I thought it should be. Um, it's not bad, right? But it's not perfect. Um, and so the answer to this, like the answer to, as I said, about half of uh, what happens with FSCD uh, is adsorption. Like, why is it not square? The answer is adsorption. Uh, so with lovely absorption, what happens is, I'm going to draw just a little bit down here, this is just a little bit bigger. Um, so again, it should be a perfect square, 
But what happens is that it takes just a little bit of time uh, um, as the dopamine comes in for it actually to start absorbing the electrodes. So we're just a little bit slow. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a little bit slow coming in again because we just need, it's, as it comes in, we need some time for it to actually absorb to the electrode, and we don't see it if it doesn't. Uh, and then, as I said, it kind of levels off, and then it comes back down. And then the bane of our existence in FSCB is that little hang-up. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not even quite perfectly like this. Would this this was like at zero, and it didn't come back down to the same baseline. You can see it. A great example of it. Uh, uh, you know, this is the data that we pulled from the lab that we use all, do all the time. It doesn't come back down. And this again is leftover dopamine that's still absorbed to the electrode. So that absorption process can be pretty, so even though I'm not flowing any dopamine by anymore, this should be buffer, uh, you know, uh, this is buffer flowing, I'm not flowing dopamine anymore, but if it was stuck to the electrode and it went to dopamine north and that stayed stuck to the electrode and it went back, it can still be there um, as dopamine. And so that's the, um, those are the characteristic kind of shapes that we get. Um, if you do something that doesn't absorb as much, like ascorbic acid or just um, a test compound that doesn't absorb, like we've seen in hexamine, you can get more of the like traditional kind of square shape. It's a way to test that your system uh, actually looks like what it what it should look like. Um, so this is all of the ideal uh, sort of things that we see uh, in FSCB. It turns out that again. Um, seeing all the data is both good and bad, uh, right? Uh, and that um, we would love, especially if we, if we go to in vivo, this is not in vivo again, this is just a flow cell, as ideal as it could go. Sometimes there are problems though, and I'm going to attempt to draw a color plot, which is going to be bad because I didn't find green. Um, uh, I didn't find a green. Uh, but we have our two dopamine things there, right? The problem is that if you go in vivo, sometimes you start to see these other color changes uh, that occur at other places, uh, you know, and you know, you'll get, they, they might be different colors, they, they could be up or down, green or blue, uh, kind of thing, but you'll get these other uh, kind of blobs, and as I said, this blob we wanted, that was dopamine, this blob we wanted, that was good, that was dopamine, but now I've got these other color changes, um, and oftentimes they last like not just while this is you know not just while dopamine is present, but other things, and so it turns out that we can get currents in vivo um, that are not just due to dopamine, but we particularly things like pH or ionic shifts mess us up, and they mess us up because they change the background current. So again, all of the FSCV, coming back to something I think I covered in like segment one or two, is predicated on the fact that I took a background somewhere here, and I assumed it didn't change. Right? I assumed that all my background part was going to be the same here and here and here. But if I start to change the ions that are around the electrode, now that's going to change the background charging current. And so you get these background subtraction errors that happen at the electrode. And um, they, again, we see them more in vivo, but they can also happen just for anything that, that changes the background current. So if you have a product or something that sticks to your electrode, now that changes the background current, you'll get another background subtraction error. So as I said, ideally all color plots look like this. Really easy to see two peaks. You know, two clear things for dopamine. But reality is when you go into a biological system, you got to be better at kind of discriminating. This is my real ferroidic peak. The rest of these things aren't. Um, and so many of the, um, you know, along with looking at thousands of CVs, as I said, if you get 10,000 CVs in an experiment, um, a lot of data analysis techniques have been developed, and I'm going to cover all of them today. The main one that Whiteman's lab kind of started with is uh, called PCR, Principal Components Regression, or sometimes you'll hear it called PCA, Principal Components Analysis. 
where they try and look at like what does dopamine look like and then what does like a pH shift look like and then they do they feed it examples right they train they give it training sets and then the computer goes through your data and tells you this one is dopamine and this is the dopamine component you know this is the dopamine component you wanted and these components I got rid of them because those aren't what you're looking for um, updated like um, analytics some people are trying to use things like machine learning that kind of thing uh, but we're kind of in the data uh, revolution and I think it's going to come even more uh, to FSCV how to look at these things how to discriminate um, two different um, compounds but yes uh, the first thing is to you know kind of look at them yourself uh, but the next thing right is that you don't look through but that the computer looks through all of your data right uh, and tells you which one was dopamine and which one wasn't dopamine uh, and that sort of thing.